I'd like to start with, if I, if I might, Miss Evans has just asked for the discussion uh, regarding elected versus, versus appointed tax assessors. Um, Miss Evans, you've got something you'd like to add to that? No more than over the years, I'm sure that we'll benefit more by having um, our assessors there's not a benefit to the county. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, everybody don't be on the county state of Georgia. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I, that, if you don't know, Lambs County currently is the only only state or the only county in the state that has elected assessors. Um, I mean, everybody else is wrong. We're all the ones that are right. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> and I'm sure Stephanie can sort of justify it. We can really be time. We have a hard time trying to deal with that problem. Yeah. Question I have about that, do we have any authority to address that issue and what would be the purpose in having appointed the uh, what's left? Yeah, well your authority would be is that you would have to get the legislators to introduce a referendum to understand it right in order to get it changed from an elected official to an elected official. So it would have to be something that would end up going to the voters anyway. It's up to the county to make that recommendation. Generally, the del local delegation, this has been discussed previously, has asked that the referendum be held to warrant their introduction of particular legislation. This was uh, brought before the public 15 years ago? 22. 22 years ago. Um, and it was determined at that time that the taxpayers wanted to do that. So the, the times I have discussed it with uh, our delegates was that they would ask most likely for it prior to the introduction. So if that was to be a goal that the board agreed upon, it would need to be considered for Inclusion in the next well, I think I'm sorry, but I, I, I respect Lois and Rio Earl 90% of the things, I'm sure. But on this one, I, I can't think of anything that would be in conflict with what we have already passed. Well, I think that the board would like to see the legislature take the time to look at it and decide whether or not it is something that would be beneficial to the county. I think the tax assessors being directly accountable to the people been elected by the people. Mm -hmm. They're the ones responsible for placing the value on this property we're sitting in and all of our, our property. I, I think that uh, if they become appointed, you lose that step of direct accountability to the people. And I'm in favor of leaving it like it is. Don't know how the rest of the commission is going to really discuss that well the they feel about it. But I think that when it comes to accountability of taxation, those people won't be elected and uh, responsible directly to the voters. Should be. Should well, talk to the assessors that we have now. Only one say that I like to be the like to live, but the others say they more or less they like to live. But they, they don't assess taxes, John. They assess well, they values on property value. Yeah. yeah. Which they, so they, you're saying the people who assess the taxes, they don't assess. All they do is value the property. I understand they, they put the value, I know they have to deal with the millage rate and all that, but I know they're the ones who have established the value of property. Okay. And, and I can't think of a group of people that ought to be more directly accountable to the people than those who establish uh, the value of property. Well, the good news is we don't have to wonder because there are 158 of the 159 counties in Georgia that do it differently than us. So if, so if, if there's not a problem in the under, other 158, then that means that that theory does not hold as much water as it sounds like it holds. If, on the other hand, in the 158 counties that do it, we see that it's chaos and it's just big government and the people don't have any recourse or anything like that, then I think that is a case to keep the same. But what we can't do is we can't circle our wagons without doing a little research. And so I would say, number one, if 
it looks like the state of Georgia <clears throat> has moved in that direction, various counties have moved in that direction, then that should weigh on our decision to pursue it. Um, I don't see any problem with putting it on a referendum and letting the folks decide. We are not deciding if we put it on a referendum. So the argument whether or not it should or should not be done is not for now. Whether or not put it on a referendum is the argument in front of us now. The debate over whether it's a good idea or not happens if there's a referendum. Does that make sense? It does. So the I cart before the horse is to say, I want to keep it. That's not the question. The question is, do we want to put it on a referendum? Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm I think curious. so. How in the world they get, how are we the only county to have elections? How everybody else get appointed ones and we're those kind of 150 our, our superior elect. Having <laughs> served in communities other than Lowndes County, the theory in those counties appears to be that they would prefer that the individuals making the determination of their value is not based on politics. The person who comes. They feel that the person making the decision when you go before the board of assessors should base it on the facts as opposed to whether they might garner your support if they lower your value as opposed to raise your value. That's the theory. I'm not saying it is or isn't. That's the general consensus that they would prefer that. These are independently appointed individuals who have nothing to gain by the assessment of that value. I see, uh, <clears throat> oftentimes I think it becomes a disconnect when people are appointed and they're on staff and they don't have to run for office, they don't have to face the voters, they don't have to go out and look at the people in the eye like we do. And uh, that's a step of accountability, I think, actually become assessing the value of property which is the person who will be taking having to pay that property value in taxes. I think here's right, the, but, you know we can beat that horse all day. Yeah. I know you want to move on. We yeah. can. Here, here's the here's the issue and this is what what I'd like to try to accomplish. Number one between the commissioners does this issue have merit to move forward so that we can ask staff to get us the information that we need so that we can make a decision during our retreat coming up. That's the purpose of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'd like to get again, is a consensus from the commissioners, whether it warrants additional information, additional work by staff to get the information to us so we can make that decision. I think so. So then by yeah. do, you're okay with that. Okay, yeah, so yeah, by so doing that then I would say at the same time we would classify this issue as a short term goal. If we get the information that we have or that we need and we get to the retreat, are we then going to be ready to take a look at it to say it's something that we may want to put on the ballot, put the referendum out there. A like November ballot, is that what you're saying? Possibly. Yes. As early as that. At least to make a decision, take the position on it, and then be prepared to move forward. Or a primary ballot, big four yeah. primary ballot. Well, if, if, if we're going to discuss it and take it as a short term goal, it doesn't need to be that we feel that it would be better. I mean, we need to be able to document that we, you know, it's either running late or the valuations are, are all significantly compared to industry, state standards or things like that. I mean, the people. I think for the people to say we need to make a change, they have to understand it's just not a, we think it'd be better, there has to be, you know, here's why we think it would be better to have staff. Well, that's really, as well, I think that we need to look at it because there are pros and cons to both sides. Right. I, I, I agree with you. But at the same time, there's things to where um, the, the pros may outweigh the cons simply, such as training. Uh, I, you know, I understand that if you're if you're appointed, there's some mandatory training that all the appointed assessors has to go through, not necessarily with the elected commission. I'm not 100 percent sure. That's what we need to do from the staff is to get us all that information to let us know if there is a weakness in either one of them, whether you be elected or whether you're appointed uh, assessors. 
And uh, by doing that, then we will be able to come back in March and be able to then set the direction that the commission wants to move in and take a position on it. What, what, kind, of, what kind of information does staff collect? What, what do we need? What kind of information do we need? I think they would take a look at, just take a look at the two issues. Number one, an elected, uh, elected assessment. What are the concerns that we have? Um, what are the training requirements for those things? Um, what, are the, you know, what are the negatives and then what are the positives? And then you do the same thing with an appointed assessor to see which one you actually honestly feel like and for the community you have a better individual making those decisions. I'll just let the commissioner know that this is, I'm sure, more of a philosophical issue than, than anything else. Anytime we remove the ability of people to directly elect somebody and take away that vote, we are shortening the democratic process a little bit more. That's, that's the way I see it, especially when it comes to taxation. Now, I know the tax commission collects the taxes. I'm, I'm the, I appreciate you correcting me. I knew that. But the assessors assess the value. Still, it's taxation. And I can't think of anything more important <laughs> than the issue of taxation and having those people responsible for assessing and collecting taxes, in this case, assessing taxes, and being directly responsible for people. Well, that's a, that may be a philosophical difference. Yeah. And it may be. Uh, people on their staff, but they're ultimately responsible like we are. We have staff here, but we're ultimately responsible. Okay. All right, what I've got right here so we can move forward that I, is that we've got direction that, we, that it warrants moving it forward, uh, and at the same time, we can classify this as a short-term goal. Everybody agree? All right.